Hi, my name is Amina Ghani. I'm currently a freshman at the University of Delaware studying music education. As a Muslim woman who is currently studying music education, I was particularly drawn to Ava Jesse and her story. She was a pioneer in music education and advocacy on the stage. Her ability to use music for the greater good is truly admirable and deserves to be widely recognized in classrooms. This is the story of Ava Jesse, my obscure but phenomenal moment in black history. Let's take a look into my future classroom. Good morning, class. Today we're gonna to begin by learning about Ava Jesse. Ava Jesse was born in Cuffeyville, Kansas on January 20th in 1895. She was raised primarily by her aunt and her grandmother for the first six years of her life, and then she moved to be close with her mother in Seattle. In 1908, when she was only 13 years old, she was accepted into Western University. Now, I don't know about you, but it's kind of hard to be accepted into college when you're 18. I would think 13 would be really hard. So that just shows how absolutely smart she was. She began to explore a lot of musical opportunities and even decided to study choral music and music theory in her time there. While at the university, she was given the opportunity to lead the collegiate choir because of her vast musical knowledge. There, she was able to develop an educational foundation as well as establish herself as a musician. The experience with her choir gave an insight on how to lead a professional ensemble, and she was starting to get recognized by her great work. Now, if we skip to 1911, when she graduated from Western University, she began to enter herself in competitions to showcase her poetry, something that she was also passionate about alongside music. It went, her, pa her passion for poetry was very powerful and even began to, won, to win her a lot of competitions for her poems. She also worked on getting her teaching certification from Langston University post-graduation so she could start teaching music. With that, she taught music in many local schools and always brought her passion with her. Her next venture was leading the music program at Morgan State College, which lasted all the way up until 1926. During that time, she developed strong relationships with her students and colleagues and valued getting to know everyone in the department. She decided to move from Maryland to New York in 1926 to further her musical career. And just one year later, in 1927, she decided to join the, Jubilee Dick the Dixie Jubilee Singers, which eventually changed the name to the Ava Jesse Choir for the tribute of the amazing work that she did for them. In just two years of her being with the singers, she began to become the director of the ensemble. Throughout her time with them, they performed at large venues for eager audiences. People came from all over to be able to hear the group collaborate with each other. A project that she worked on simultaneously while she was singing with the Jubilee, Jubilee, Dixie Jubilee Singers was her My Spirituals Composition Collection. In this, she began to encapsulate the stories of her life through music. Her intricate scores were 16 pieces for voice and piano. The project started because of her strong belief in the power of spirituals and how important that they and how important they were for her community. Additionally, she believed that the majority of vocal music was associated with African American musicians was commonly jazz. Since spirituals were a big part of her culture and her personal story, she felt that it was her mission to bring more representation into the field. Now, class, I think that that was really inspirational and her using music in order to be more comfortable with her identity. Maybe that's something that we can all think about. She wrote the entirety of My Spirituals in just three weeks. That shows how much passion she had. Now, while maintaining involvement with the Ava Jesse Choir, she was also the choir director for two operas from 1934 to 1935. The two operas were Four Saints in Three Acts and Porgy and, Porgy and Bess. However, when she was working on these operas, she realized she was receiving a lot of disrespect. 
despite being asked personally to work alongside the directors. Her solution was fighting for advocacy on the stage and rallying for, to have her choir perform for the first ever performance for the public of Porgy and Bess. She realized that the industry was overpopulated by white men who continuously received more respect on and off the stage, so she worked alongside civil rights activists throughout her career. Because of her work with social justice and bringing that into her music, she was asked by Martin Luther King Jr. himself to perform with her choir at the March on Washington. They all sang, We Shall Overcome. Now, she began, she continued her work with the Ava Jesse Choir up until 1960, where the choir disbanded, and she decided to move to Michigan in order to continue her work through educating others in college. She worked at the, at the University of Michigan for a few years and carefully curated a legacy there. Then, after that, she began to work at Pittsburgh State, Pittsburgh State University in order to be closest to her home. And she did a similar thing for the School of Music there that she did for the University of Michigan, where she was an artist in residence. She was able to further build her compositional portfolio, which was a, coll a collection of all of her compositions. And she, be she was able to also create music for the university while serving as a guest lecturer and talking about the work that she had done throughout her lifetime. Ava Jesse passed away in 1992 in her home state of Kansas. However, before she passed away, she received many honorary doctorates. Now, honorary doctorates, for, the, for you class who don't know, is when you do such amazing work that without having to go to school, people gave you degrees because you have done so many good things in your life. And she got three of them, which is almost unheard of. Her honorary doctorates were from Wilberforce University in Ohio, Allen University in South Carolina, Southern University in Louisiana, and Eastern Michigan University. They all recognize the amazing work that she did. And that's not the end of her legacy. She was also named Kansas Ambassador for the Arts by Governor John Carlin. She was also listed as one of six most outstanding women in Kansas history. Because of that, there is an Ava Jesse Day that is celebrated by making music around where she used to reside in the state of Kansas. And in 1989, she was featured in famous artist Brian Lanker's photography exhibit, I Dreamed a World, Portraits of Black Women Who Have Changed America. Now, we're studying her story today because Ava Jesse actually is not found in classrooms a lot. Her name is often glossed over and her legacy is slowly starting to dwindle. However, we're not going to let that happen because she made so many amazing impacts and we should all recognize that she taught people how to use music in order to make the world around her a better place.